In this week's episode, I'll give you my first impressions of the original Prusa MK2S, right here on Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. First off, this machine was actually donated to the channel. I talked to Joseph Prusia himself at the Midwest Rep Rep Festival and told him I wanted to review his machine and compare it to the other i3 clones that I have in the shop. And he agreed to it as long as I would give him an honest review of assembling this kit. So that's what I'm going to do. And part of the compensation is I will use this on the channel from time to time and I get to keep it. So, if anything, that's the compensation. Other than that, I have not been paid for this review in any way, shape, or form. And if something's wrong, I will tell you. My workshop is really in a mess right now. I've been cleaning some things up, reorganizing, and I needed a place to just lay out a printer and build it. So, this is an extra room in a house, and my wife agreed that I could put this together down here. So, this took about five to six hours to put together. And I wouldn't say it's an easy kit to put together, but it's not difficult either because of the complete assembly instructions that come with it. Now this is a book. It's got color pictures, step by step. If you follow this book, I don't see how you can screw this up because this was a complete manual. There's a few times where the picture could have been maybe a little bigger or a little more, a little different angle or something. But other than that, I followed this book and put this thing together without issues. And there's also videos as well if you want to follow a video or you have more questions. I didn't have to. This thing went together nicely. The only issue I had in assembly after it was complete was the x-axis stop switch, which is right here. The carriage would actually hit the wires against this inside wall. It would come over and hit the wires before it would press the stop switch. There's a little plastic arm that sticks out that's supposed to hit the stop switch and it just wasn't long enough. Now I tried to position the wires over more but I followed the directions in the book of how to strap them and it's really well done with a bolt and you tie strap around it but it just was hitting. So I added a little rubber foot, hard rubber foot that I stole off one of my electronics boards, stuck it on there and now it, it stops beautifully. So that was the only modification I did to this whole printer. And then once you get it assembled there's a 3D printing handbook which steps through uh, calibrating it and the different steps of loading the filament and how to set the nozzle and, and all kinds of things. It's a great companion manual to the assembly instructions. So Joseph Prusa and his team have done a great job of showing you how to put this thing together. I have done some prints on this machine and it came with a full spool of pink filament from Prusa himself. It's what the box says from Prusa Research and for all you Pink Mafia fans out there yes I now have pink filament to print with. And this filament printed actually very nice. I printed first his logo, the Prusa logo which is on the SD card and I was amazed at how well it stuck to this PEI bed and came out as smooth as glass. In fact it feels smoother than some of the prints I've done on glass and looks better. The detail of the letters on top is very crisp. This thing will look nice just pasted up here somehow. I'll have to figure out how to do that. But that's, that's the first print I did on it using his filament. Well this was the first print I did after the label. I decided to just print the Annalinda Dragon and this came out fantastic. For a first print it stuck to the bed nicely. The bottom is nice and smooth. The detail on top of the feet, uh, the ribbing of the back, the tail, the wings, this is with no supports. Just a beautiful print. Absolutely beautiful print. But I wanted to compare this to some of my other printers and I know it's going to blow away the $154 cheap eBay printer I got and I printed Andalinda on that guy. Now this was at a .3 layer height so it's not completely fair. But this thing is so rough. I was happy that I could get this to print on that cheap $154 printer. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to the video up here. But now I did print this same Annalinda on my CR10. And I'm really impressed with the quality I'm getting out of my CR10. And I used some filament that I got from Protopasta. This is an HTPLA... Um, special filament. It's a prototype filament and it's a natural color and I just I love it. It prints really good and this guy came out 
beautiful. I, this is the best print I've had on any of my 3D printers. Well, this definitely gives it a run for its money, but it was hard to compare the two. So I loaded that same filament onto the Prusa here and printed another one of the Analinda. And when I compare these two, honestly, it's so minor of a difference. I can't even tell you which one is which, except for the fact the ribbing or the, the spine right here is slightly rougher than it is on the um, Prusa. That's the one area, any little sharp turns like that are on the tail here at the front of the tail. It's a little bit rougher on the CR10 print than it is on the Prusa. So the Prusa is still slightly better than what I'm getting out of my CR10 on this one particular print. But other than that, these are both beautiful prints. If I could get all my printers to print this good, I'd probably never look for another 3D printer, honestly. As I was completing this and calibrating it, I, get, I noticed that Joseph Prusa had released his Prusa Control. It's a software front end, so you can slice your own files right there in his front end. It makes it easier to use. It's supposed to be easier for someone getting started. And then behind it is a slicer or slick 3R, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, slicing engine that will actually produce the g-code so I actually tried that out and I used my chess pawn which I print on just about every printer I've ever reviewed I sliced this and used that same protopasta filament I think I sliced this a 0.15 using his settings in Prusa control printed this guy out and it's amazing it's probably the best chess pawn I have ever printed on any of my printers it's smooth it's crisp, the lines, everything, the detail is awesome. So I'm, I'm impressed with that. But I want to try other filaments. And I've got wood filament loaded up here, and I was trying to print something for my wife. And I went to Prusa Control again, and he had a profile in there for wood filament. Not Kaleido, which is what this is, but a wood filament. And it started out printing just beautifully, nice and smooth. But then it got spotty and rough and stringy. I, I really, I don't know what went wrong. I'm sure it's my settings. The temperature wasn't right. So I used this base setting. So this is my first filled print. I don't know if it's the machine or me. But it's probably me. But I'm going to go back and check it. But it did make me pull up this guy. This was a sheet that came with the Prusa printer. And it it's a checklist of everything that they checked on this machine which is awesome I've never seen this on any other printer or printer kit in addition to the checklist it's got two graphs one of them is a test of the hot end and it says it goes to a maximum of 248.3 degrees C and it reached that in 92 seconds which that's amazing that they include this but I noticed it said 248 C is the maximum now I don't know if that's the maximum temperature of this hot end but it it kind of implies that it is. And if that's the case, it's confusing because when I look at the preheat settings here in the LCD, it shows ABS a preheat of 255 degrees and 100 degrees on the bed. Well, if this only goes to 248.3, how's it ever going to get to 255? Well, I did try an ABS print, and you know what I got? I got a temp error. So it's kind of implying that 248 is the max, not 255. So I don't know why... It's showing 255 on here. I'm, I'm going to have to find out from Joseph and his company there what's going on. Because the heat bed graph, which is below it, it shows a maximum of 100 degrees C. And it reached that in 394 seconds, which is about six and a half minutes. So they've already tested this. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to try it. But that's what I tried to do with the ABS settings because it's 255 and 100 degrees in the bed. And like I said, I got the temp error. So I don't know why it's not reaching it. Is it the hot end can't hit 255 or the bed didn't hit 100? I don't know. So I'm going to have to try and do some things separately. But this is interesting. Their data doesn't really match what the screen is. So that's a, that's a real question there. So I haven't printed any ABS on it because of that error. I do want to try some nylon. And this is some cheap nylon I got from Inland at Micro Center. It was only 15 bucks. I had to grab it. It says it'll print from 230 to 260. So I'm figuring if I can get to 240, 245, maybe I can get this stuff to print. I'll try out nylon. I also have some flexible filament, some really cheap flexible filament that I got from Inland as well. This says 210 to 230. So I want to try that. And because this isn't a Bowden setup like the CR10 is, I should be able to do flexible filament on this. 
So the versatility of this printer seems potentially better than anything that I've got other than say my Flashforge Dreamer which I know can do uh, I've done some flexible on it. I haven't done nylon on that guy. I'm going to try it, but it's enclosed, so it can definitely do ABS. So it's it's going to be interesting to compare this to those other printers, but th you know that's not an i3. But this is really intriguing to me. The quality of the prints, the fact that the parts are mostly 3D printed, and it's giving me the quality that it's giving me. My first impression is this is a really good printer. But I'm going to have to do a lot more testing. I'm going to have to find out about that temperature error thing. But overall, I am really happy with the results I'm getting. So that's it for this week. Uh, I'll be There will be more on this printer in the future. But I hope you enjoyed what I got here. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And I'll try to answer them in future videos. Or if you're a Patreon supporter, ask me on Patreon. You know, I'll get, you'll get the answer right away. So that's, uh, that's my first impressions. Tell me what you think in the comments below. So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up over here. And if you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to the Patreon logo that's popping over my head. And if you aren't a subscriber, please click on the logo that's over here on my arm. And click on and subscribe. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.